All right, so today we're going to be roasting some coffee. Um, this is basically, I've been doing this for probably 13, 15 years, quite a while. So I've got a little bit of uh, know-how on what I'm doing here. I can't say I'm a true coffee connoisseur and can tell the differences between this nuance and that nuance, but I do enjoy my roasted coffee. It's better than anything you get at a grocery store and better than, I like it better than Starbucks. I don't like the charred taste Starbucks puts in it. I like a nice rich roast. Uh, my wife likes more of a milder roast, so today we're gonna try to roast it between a rich roast to a mild roast just to get a little compromise. Um, so we'll see what we do here. Uh, I like to start off, uh, I go to Coffee Bean Corral. I get my coffee beans there. I bought 25 pounds, which is two of these bags. This is a 12 and a half pound bag. But 25 pounds for 16 or $116 and 22 cents. Uh, and it comes green. So what I'm gonna have to do today is just roast it. Not the entire bag, just a batch that's gonna last me probably three, four weeks. And then uh, another three, four weeks, I'll roast another batch. So this is how I set up here. Um, number one, I'm gonna just clean off the patio here because we got a little bit of dirt. I'm gonna just make it, make sure it's somewhat sanitized. I do get the occasional bean that falls on the ground and I like to pick it up if it's, if it's salvageable. Um, so we make sure we have a clean surface. Falling coffee beans does happen. All right, and then uh, get your propane tank, and I'm gonna get my bio burner. I'm going to go to the shed, run, get that right now. Got my bio burner. Now, when I first started this, um, I used a hot air popper, just pop my, a popcorn popper. And I used it exclusively for roasting coffee beans. Uh, that works pretty good, but uh, the disadvantage of that is it's very small batch. You can't get the same amount of beans here, and uh, the popcorn popper doesn't last forever. It lasted probably four, five, six months, and then I had to revert to something else. And the popcorn popper gets an, a brown, oily film inside it from the coffee beans. And it's kind of off-putting if you want to use it for popcorn after that. You have to kind of exclusively coffee bean only. Um, it's, it, the advantage of the popcorn popper is it roasts very even. Uh, you don't really have to monitor it. Occasionally you get the, pop, the, uh, the bean that jumps out of the popper. you got to keep feeding it back in there. Uh, I, like, I like it because it's a very even roast. Um, this way it takes a little more work. You gotta babysit this for 30 minutes or so. So, step one is get your bayou burner. I've got some old pans that I've been, I've had for years. Don't use them for anything else other than exclusively for coffee. Get my two pans. The reason for the second pan is I like to cover sometimes is to heat up, get the quick heat up on it. Or if it starts raining, which it might do today, just kind of just kind of keep it from getting wet. So uh, I got an old spatula that I now it's a coffee coffee spatula, and uh, I'm gonna pour. I'm gonna start up my burner here. Got my sparker. Don't want too much flame on there. It's a brand new bag. I just got it in about mm, no, a couple weeks ago. Pour, pour my, pour my batch into there. What I think I'm gonna cook. Now, uh, when you pour that in, remember that uh, the coffee will expand as it heats up. I'm going to put a little bit more in there, actually. It will expand. You'll get more volume than what you put in there. Uh, but at the same time, you're going to lose about 17% to 
sometimes I lose 20% of weight. So if you put two, two and a half pounds of coffee in there, expect about two pounds of coffee. Now this is, this is a blend I got from Coffee Bean Corral. This is the Oberon Serrado Natural 1718 from Brazil. 12 and a half pound bag. Again, $116 for 50 pounds of that. Or, no, that was $116 for 25 pounds of that. So I got the heat on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir this constantly for half an hour or so. This usually takes me about half an hour. Um, sometimes if it's a cold day, I like to put the second cover on there just to kind of give it a little bit of a little help to get to the right temperature. Um, but I don't keep that on exclusively. It's just kind of, it sucks having to stir it with the cover on. I won't be using that, but I also use the, uh, the second pan for cooling off my you like coffee beans at the end of the roast. Um, so I'm just gonna just stir this steadily. You see, starting to get a little bit of brown on it. I have to do this in order to get an even roast. Uh, if I stop, you're gonna get darker beans than others. So you need know, dark beans and green beans. So. Now you can crank the heat up if you want and get it done in 20 minutes or so, but you're gonna have a very uneven batch. I find a, a good even batch comes from expecting about a half hour of this. So I just put a nice low flame on that. Cook it slow and steady. So what, what I'm doing here is I'm shuffling the beans from the edge, putting it into the center, and kind of moving it around. So just trying to keep the bottom beans from burning rotating the top beans back in. Uh, you'll hear that it's starting to crack like popcorn. Those are the beans. Beans are cracking, they're going to slowly expand. beans crack. There's two cracks. There's the first crack. Then that kind of pauses and then you'll hear the second crack come in. Once it hits the second crack, uh, that's about when you want to stop it. You'll, you'll, know, you'll know when to stop it just by the color you see on it and there will be an oily, a nice oily sheen on the beans. That's kind of what you're going for. Trying to get the color that you want and the oily sheen. Uh, once I tried roasting it really dark and I got it really oily and then the top caught fire. <laughs> so uh, I had to put the second on top of there just to put out that fire. I enjoy a dark roast, my wife did not. So if you want a nice espresso type taste to it. Or if you enjoy the Starbucks tar taste, that's what you've been going for. I just enjoy a nice, rich taste, that's all. So on Coffee Bean Corral, you can filter your beans out however you like it. You can get, uh, you filter by price, you can filter by the different characteristics in the bean. Uh, I like to get the blends because they seem to be a nice compromise between all the characteristics that I try to go for. Um, like I say, I'm not much of a coffee coffee snob, so I don't I don't really know exactly what to get. Um, I went to Jamaica once, and I got the Blue Mountain coffee. And to be honest. I paid a lot of money for that coffee. I could not taste any difference between the coffee I make. Uh, somebody went to Hawaii once and brought me back some Hawaiian coffee. Again, I couldn't tell the difference. This, 
Now I'm at the point where uh, I can see quite a bit of unevenness in the roads. I see a lot of greens mixed in with a lot of dark, dark beans. Uh, that tells me I'm, I'm, I'm heating it way too fast. So I'm going to turn the heat down. Get a nice low flame. Get this cooking evenly. If you're cooking too fast, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get you're going to get a lot of uneven unevenness in your in your beans. So let's cook it a little slower. Try to get more even. Now you can already see it's starting to expand. Now we've got more volume in here than what we put in there. It's going to expand even more after that. That's what I meant to say. So this is basically what we got here going right now. Keep it from burning. I've been quite distracted on this batch just with the camera and I can see a lot of unevenness. If you're on this stirring constantly, you don't have this uneven roast happening. Okay, now I can start to see the green actually starting to turn brown. Um, so turning the heat down was a good thing. If you're not constantly moving this, it will burn. It will be a very uneven roast. Again, that's that's why I like the hot air popper. Is you didn't have to do this all the time. It was a very even roast. The way I do it here, you can get a much bigger batch, but you have to put you have to dedicate yourself to a good half hour of doing this. No interruption. But on the other side, that half hour, I can, I can usually get three or four weeks of coffee out of this batch. Now some people might think, oh, I can roast this in my oven at home. <sighs> See all that smoke coming off of that? Yeah. Not a good idea. This is a very smoky process. That's not a real coffee smell at the moment. It's it's got a it's got a distinct oily earthy smell to it right here. You're not it doesn't smell exactly like coffee right at the moment. Uh, do not think you can do this in your oven. If you, if you have an awesome ventilation system. Maybe. That's not something I would do though. Nor is it something I would recommend. Now I've also done something similar on my barbecue top. Ah, uh, that works. I have gotten rid of my barbecue though, and I'm uh, getting rid of my barbecue. I had to get the bio burner just so I could cook coffee and other things. I brew beer, so I use the bio burner for brewing beer. This is a good investment, this Bayou Burner. Uh, I will put a link to buy yourself a Bayou Burner. Great for boiling. Good enough for roasting. I prefer my smoker for making steaks. That's a good steak. So we're about 75 to 80 percent done here. You can see the, the definite brownness that has that we have achieved. Uh, we are starting to see an oily sheen on some of the darker beans. 
what I'm trying to do here is just get a nice consistent brown color to it all. Uh, the light colors are still way too light for me. Uh, I don't have the oily sheen on the lighter ones quite yet. So I'm guessing another five or ten minutes and this will be done. You can hear the beans popping. They're expanding. See how it's almost overflowing my pan. So yeah, be careful when you put that batch in your pan. You will you need room to move it around. That smoke stuff coming off the top, um, that's gonna get in your hair. <laughs> that's gonna get in your clothes. So you might wanna change your clothes after because you're gonna smell like like a green coffee roastery. Might be your thing, but uh, you'll come out smelling like this. We're getting to the point where we're almost done. Some of these lighter beans are still way too light for me. Um, way too light, but yeah, they're they are too light. I noticed the roast is not as even as I usually get. I guess I've been a little distracted with the camera equipment. Usually I'm a little more even on this roast. Ah, keep dropping beans. When you've reached what you think is your optimal roast, you want to stop the cooking as fast as you can. Otherwise, it's going to keep cooking inside. Uh, so that's why I have the other pan. It's sitting on the ground right now. I'm going to pour half of this into that pan to get it to optimal temperature. And the rest I'm going to pour into my buckets. And we're going to A, cool it off, and B, we're going to get rid of some of the chaff. Now chaff isn't a bad thing, uh, it doesn't affect the taste so much of your coffee, but it will clog up your coffee filter. So I just like to get rid of it as much as I can. I'm not, if I don't get rid of it all, it's not a big deal. All right, my phone. So my phone just rang, and I got distracted with uh, with a call. So that's that sucks. Happens being on a call like that. So let me just hope I didn't burn my roast. Yeah, you got to commit yourself to half an hour here. But uh, yeah, being on call 24/7. <sighs> Anybody who's on call 24/7 knows my knows the feels. That's how it is when you're on call 24/7. So uh, this is looking pretty good. This looks about 98% of what I'm striving for. See, some of these beans are a little too. Uh, some of this white stuff is actually just chaff. So look past the chaff. See what the bean is doing. Um, yeah, some of these beans are a little too light for me. Some are a little on the darker side. Uh, like I say, my wife does not like dark coffee. Um, so I think we got here a good compromise between what I like and what she likes. I like to see this nice oily sheen on the beans. Now if you roast it too much and get too dark, there's a chance that it will catch fire. I have done that once or twice. Be prepared to put that fire out. Yeah, so I think this is looking done. I'm gonna uh, turn the gas off. And I'm going to set up my camera. So what we have here is my second pan. 
some of these beans are going to go into into here. About half the beans. Half the beans go into this bucket. Beware that uh, these buckets that you use, they will get this brown stain on them uh, over time. So if your wife is going to complain about it, then get a get some buckets dedicated just for these for this purpose. Uh, so there's about half of it right now. The other half I'm going to pour in here just so it can cool off. What I'm trying to do here is stop the cooking process. And while that's cooling off, I put the pan on the concrete to cool that off. Now I'm going to set my camera up and we're going to remove the chaff on this. Hence the reason for the two buckets. So I'm going to... In here is cooling it off and letting that chaff kind of go away at the same time. So, right here, you're trying to stop the cooking as fast as you can, blow off that chaff at the same time. If you've got chaff left in there, don't worry about it. I'm going to pour these beans into the pan that is cooling right at the moment. Actually, let's come over here and show you this. Okay, so these are going to go into the pan that's cooling off. And then I'm going to put these into here. fall on the ground. I'm not too concerned about it. All right, and then we're going to do the chaff thing again on this. Let's get rid of the chaff on this. Now it's actually starting to smell like coffee, not just the gas, but that, not the smoke that's coming off of it. What's going to happen over the next day or two is this, the, the coffee is going to let off a little bit of gas. Uh, you can roast it right away, but you're going to get much better taste if you wait a day or two on this. I will combine these two batches and let it sit in the house for about 30 minutes to an hour before I add it to my, my coffee container. This part is tricky. No doubt about it. There you go, got a nice batch. All right, and here's a picture of the batch size that that makes, that I roasted, and that should last me about a month. That's how you roast coffee. So guys, that's how I've been roasting coffee for several years now. Uh, it works well for me. That's the equipment I use and you can do the same with similar equipment. So I'll also have some links down below on some equipment you can buy for a similar setup here on roasting your own coffee at home. Full disclosure, 
I do make some money on that equipment that gets sold through the links down below. If you don't know where or how to buy green coffee, hold on. I'll produce another video. I'll show you exactly where to get that and what to look for when you're shopping for coffee. Do any of you guys roast coffee? I'd actually like to hear from you and some input on what you do or what I perhaps should be doing differently to make my coffee roast go better. Comment below, let me know what you think. Some ways you can encourage and support me with this channel are subscribing, liking this video, commenting below, and sharing with your friends. Comment anything. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I don't care. I'll try my best to reply to you. Stay tuned for my next one of my next videos. Might be my next, might not be, but I'll show you where to buy coffee and other handy things that I do around the house. Thanks. See you again.